What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're gonna do some tips and tricks with taking photos of your flies. I'm gonna show you how to take your fly from this to this. All right, first and foremost, disclaimer, I'm not a photography expert. I get by with what I have, and so let's just go over what I've learned over the years and how I do things, and that's the purpose of this video. So take this as some tips and tricks, and if you get something out of it, great. If not, and if you know I'm doing something wrong, leave it in the comments below, and I will love to learn how to be better at this. So first off, we're not gonna dive into equipment, but this is what I use. This is a Nikon D750 body. I already had that before I started taking pictures of my flies. When I went into my local camera store, I asked the manager, I said, what would be a good lens? I explained what I was doing. He said, hold on, let me get the owner. The owner came out, he's a fly fisherman. He said, this is the lens I needed. It's a Nikon 105 millimeter macro lens. I think from chatting with most of the guys out there, they use between a 90 and 105, depending on what brand. But this definitely is a great lens um, for taking a wide variety of uh, different size flies and I definitely have learned a lot using it. So that's what I use. We'll just go over some basic settings here. I'll turn my camera on. So what I never change is the ISO. I keep the ISO at 100. If you have to turn it to a 2000 or something to get your light right, buy a better light. Um, what I play with is the aperture, which is the focus. I usually have it between sometimes as low uh, as an eight, um, which would mean focus with a lot of blurry, or I go as high as in the 20s, which would be pretty much the whole fly would be in focus. It just depends on if I'm shooting one fly or multiple flies. Now, what I allow to be my variable here is the shutter speed. I don't really play with the shutter speed besides I get my focus, my ISO stays the same, I figure out how I'm taking that fly, and then I use the shutter speed to manipulate the amount of light. Now, the reason why I do that is I always shoot on a tripod, and so I'm not concerned if it takes a third of a second, or sometimes when you go up into the seconds, it can be a little bit difficult, and so that's where you wanna adjust your light. And so pretty much I use my focus first, and then I use the shutter speed as the variable that allows me to manipulate um, the amount of light in the photo. So ISO never change. That's how I do all my photos. Um, the other key thing, which will be one of the tips, is to always do it on a shutter delay. Um, that's that little button right there. And what that means is you can set your camera so that you push the shutter release and you have between three seconds, five seconds, or 10 seconds before it actually um, takes the picture and that is something key for one of our tips. So first tip I mentioned is get a good light. This here is a light I picked off of Amazon a few years back. I think I've had it for about four years. It's by Teotronics. It's fully adjustable as you can see um, except for the base. I had to epoxy that back together after I dropped it. But um, the key to fully adjustable is when you're taking a photo, I can move this anywhere I want and manipulate the light so that it's reflecting how I want it. Another key thing is this is dimmable. I can adjust the amount of light that comes out. And the third thing is it, you can change the color of the light. You can go from warm light, which is kind of a um, yellowish, reddish light, um, uh, white to a daylight, which would be almost a blue light. Um, depending on what you want, you can adjust it in that way. And then the other key thing is that you want to be able to um, move this around to get it in the correct position and also that it has a diffused light. In here are a bunch of LEDs. If you don't have a cover over it, you will see little dots on your fly. If you don't have a cover, you can either one, buy another light, or two, just tape a piece of paper over it and then you've diffused the light. So, key things, make sure you can adjust the color of the light, um, that it's adjustable, um, that it's, uh, it's um, dimmable, and you can also have a diffused light. And also investing in a better light makes tying flies easier. So, we've got our light in. Let's get, uh, let's get a fly here. We'll go with this uh, nice little spay fly I tied up. 
Now what I use for my flies is a white sheet of paper. One, I've got a ton of it in my printer and when you puncture a hole in it you can just grab a new one next time. And I will position the fly on the white sheet of paper. And let's just say we're taking the picture from your angle. So you guys are the camera. So first off I'm going to get the fly in a position. Secondly, I'm going to grab my Yeti cup and I'm going to create a backdrop with the paper. So now the one, if this light were on, it would be reflecting light down and it would be reflecting light on the back side. Now something I always have handy is also some 3x5 cards in white. This allows me to manipulate the light in such a way as to reflect back on any shadows I do see. And so I will sit this, get it how I want it, remember how I'm going to hold these cards, I'll walk over to you. I will make sure it's uh, in focus, ready to go. I'll push the button and come back over without touching the camera and place these cards where I had them and then boom, it will take the photo. Now, I mentioned take the photo. One thing I like to do is when I get ready to take that photo, I zoom in depending on where my focus is on this certain aspect and I zoom in all the way and then I focus the camera. There's ways to do this automatically if you connect your SLR to certain software programs where you basically click where you want to focus. Um, but I just like that zoom in, zoom out, um, get a good focus. So that's tip number two, zoom in to focus or use automated to focus on the point that you want to highlight. Tip number three, since we're using a delayed shutter, um, you can't sit here and hold this steady while it's going to take. So you always, 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 let me say always one more time, want to use a tripod. Whether it's something as small as this to hold your phone, even if you're taking shots with your phone, use that shutter release because when you go to click that photo, you're going to move your camera slightly. So um, I, this is one of my popular ones because you can wrap it around things. Both of these I think were on Amazon for under 15 bucks. If you are going to use it for your SLR, um, this Joby one is really good. It, uh, you can, you know, it's definitely a better quality than this one to hold the SLR. But for most of my still shots, I use a little bit heavy duty or tripod that I have on the ground. And um, which leads me to my next point. Say I'm shooting a picture of this fly. Tip number three is, this will also help you become a better uh, photographer of your flies. And what I think has helped me the most is I will start by taking a photo of what I think looks good. Then I will move it slightly and take a second photo. Take another photo, take another photo, come from a different angle. It's easy to move your camera when you're on a tripod. Um, versus each time taking the fly, manipulating it to get all those stray fibers to make it look great, and then take the photo, whereas I can just move it around and get that same effect um, with the tripod. By taking these multiple angle shots, you'll also become a better fly tire because you will see certain flaws in the fly. So when you were tying it, you didn't see it, but on the macro shot on a size 22, you do see it. You see that you did too many wraps or you didn't use sharp scissors and cut that uh, tag end uh, close enough. Um, little, little things that um, I think have helped me become a better fly tire over the years. Um, so by taking multiple shots, you one, become a better fly tire and two, it creates a style. So now that you've taken your photo, the last step is to get it onto your phone. And the way I do this, I could pair this with my phone, but I think that it's a little slow because usually I'm right here by my computer. So I just take my SD card out set it into my little SD card reader, and then I upload that photo to the cloud, which then I download to my phone. There may be better ways to do this, but that's how I do it. And then if you've taken your picture correctly with the right amount of light, all you're gonna need to do is to basically crop it. You can sit there and play around with a little bit of the, the settings using your own phone software, but there's no real need to go into like Photoshop or really, really tweak the fly. Um, I think that that is a little overkill depending on if you're publishing a book or not. So um, that's the process that I do to take a picture of my fly that I'm going to be posting for social media or for my own you know, folder that I keep on my computer. I really like looking at the progression over the years. But I really, really like the adventure of going from tying the fly, um, 
remembering the fly by taking its photo, saving it in the archives, and then going out and fishing it. I think that it adds to the adventure of it. And so I hope that these tips or tricks helped you in such a way that you maybe learned something. If there's something that you saw that maybe you think I could do better on or that I'm doing wrong, please leave it in the comments below. Um, I always love learning and not I don't really get offended to people criticizing me because uh, that we're all in this to become better at what we do. And the only way to know is if I'm doing something wrong. So feel free to leave a comment and let me know or send me a message. I'm usually available if I can help you out in anything with taking uh, your own personal photos, let me know. But like I said, I'm not an expert. There's a lot of people out there that are better than me at this. But I appreciate you guys watching. If it's always um, tight lines and get out there and fish and take photos of your flies.